Is your dick fucked up? Does your life suck shit? Is your wife about to leave you cause you're annoying? Sounds like you've got a lot of fucking problems. Don't you sweat cause Stavi's gonna solve them. He's pretty fucking dumb but he can figure out your problems. Here is an example, you should always use a condom. Yeah, I just, I guess, I guess I think, I guess maybe you don't always have to is my point. Like maybe there's some situations where you don't have to. Maybe you don't. That's you know? true. Sometimes. But, um, you know, you know what? Let's just go ahead and, why don't we just finish the song? How about that? Show's about to start. It's called Stabby Solves Your Problem. God damn, that song gets me fucking going every fucking time. Ralph, hit us with the fucking first motherfucking question. All right, the first one we got is a repeat caller. It's the guy who co-signed a chick's lease. <laughs> Hell yeah! And it's a two-parter, and the second part has quite the twist. Oh my god, hold on. All right. Okay, cool. I'm ready to hear it. So I'll try to make this quick. This is a follow-up call about Lee's girl. So I love that people think this is fake, but I, I did simp that bad. I, I know. <laughs> uh, yes, the head was immaculate. Okay. She was like, she was an ex cam girl, insane body. We did it all, man. And <laughs> the saddest thing is, despite the bullshit, I can't say there aren't days where I don't miss a sex, you know? <laughs> anyway. I know what he means. I'd also just gotten out of a long term relationship when I met her, and uh, safe to say I was transferring feelings. It just sucks because I actually cared about her, you know? Yes. Simple alert. <laughs> and uh, also, simple I couldn't alert. let her stay in my place because I was still living with my ex at the time. And Oh, my God. And to be God. honest, I, I can't really afford to pay for this mistake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, the lease is over. So, yeah. But anyway, it's going to take a long-ass time to financially recover from this. But uh, <laughs> anyway, what I really wanted to follow up on was to say that I may or may not have an STD because I hit raw. No, dude. Multiple times. Uh, as I started having, like, weird swelling on one of my lymph nodes. Fuck. Since uh, we hooked up, like, a couple months ago. And I just got testing done today. And just what a way to go, you know? Career-ending STD would basically turn this into, like, a Greek tragedy or something. But anyway, just love the show. Love you. At least you Thank got you. top. Let this be a lesson to all the listeners. Never soon. <laughs> there's a, there's another part there, uh, Ralphie. Yep, here you go. Hit me with it. Yo, Ralph Stavi. It's called a follow up to this girl situation. So turns out she gave me chlamydia, man. <laughs> uh, now I'm pissed for multiple reasons, but also because. Uh, I hooked up with two other people after no. this, and uh, I didn't know I had it. So, oh. so bad for the other two chicks. No. Also, incredibly <laughs> upset that these girls said these girls said she was clean, man. But the clean oh, not. she did. I also didn't know you could pass it to someone by giving head or receiving. So <laughs> that's new for me. Um, now I've already told the other girls, but part of me wants to go nuclear on fucking these girls' ass. No. no, I shouldn't, but no. I'm in my wits end, man. Help a brother out. <laughs> How do I handle all this? Anyway, <laughs> love, peace, and chicken grease. Stay safe. This man said go nuclear. How is that going to happen? <laughs> do you mean surreptitiously give other women who did nothing wrong chlamydia? That's what you think that... <laughs> Wow, you don't say. The woman who defrauded you said she was clean? <laughs> Listen, man. You, this, this is just the L that keeps on, that you keep on, ta the L that keeps on taking. Okay? You're clear. You're finally clear. It's done. Think about that top. This is God heard you. God heard you on that last message say, there's still days sometimes where I think about the sex. 
And he's like, oh, dude, is that so? Well, how about this? How about we swell up that little fucking prick? Also, what's the fucking timeline here? You signed her lease. You just got chlamydia from her? You just found out? I'm a little confused. Is anybody else confused about what's going on here? Damn. And you were spreading the clap around. Like it's the fucking 60s. Something doesn't add up here, brother. Something does not add up. You're under arrest. You're under arrest for being that big of a simp. Pull over. Pull over. Your little fucked up dick now has chlamydia. That's what your dumbass gets for signing a fucking lease with some bitch with a fucking little fucking nose ring and where the wild things are tattooed across her pussy. You're going to simp jail, motherfucker. <laughs> God damn, bro. <laughs> you got mega pwned. And this is just one final way. There's nothing else to do. All right? You took another L. This is one of the... Honestly, this is one of the finest L's I've ever heard of in... Of all time. And there's... You know what? Take some pride in that. Take some pride in being pwned that bad. You two were beautiful. You were a perfect match. She couldn't have found the more beautiful simp. You out here, in a fucking un coming out of an unfulfilling relationship, you still live with the girl. She came through with her fucking one streak of like purple, in her fucking bob. Sucked sucked your dick with her tonsil somehow. You thought you were good to go. You were ready to fucking throw some, get some fucking go get the docu sign, get some legal paperwork out there. The pussy was so good, she sent you to a fucking notary public. <laughs> With your dumb ass. Co-signing. Hysterical. Look, there's something beautiful to being the perfect simp, and that's what you were. Okay? Doesn't, have, doesn't define you, but just know. Others have simped, but they haven't simped as hard as this. In some ways, we should... We should we should retire the word simp because there will be no more gorgeous example as you. And I think there's something to fucking hang your hat on. Okay? So, you know, keep meeting with your debt counselor to get over this and take the fucking antibiotics and use a condom for Christ's sake. Did you not hear the song? Did you not hear my theme song? You should always use a condom, except sometimes. And you know what isn't sometimes? Right after raw dogging some insane woman who stole, who fucking got you to cosign. It seems like you went back and got the pussy after cosigning. It seems like you sent, she got enough emails. Maybe you sent her a couple form letters, legal form letters. And she's like, all right, let me go fucking suck this guy off to get the fuck, to get his lawyer off my back. You're dealing with a pro here. <clears throat> you got owned big time. Take your comeuppance. Get your dick squeaky clean. All right? And use condoms for fuck's sake. Especially when you're dealing with these fucking borderline personality disorder ass bitches. But you're going to be okay. Don't go nuclear, whatever that meant. Okay? Don't do not do whatever that was. There was a sinister turn in your voice. Don't go Reddit. Don't go Reddit guy. Don't become an MRA right now. You have every right to be, but don't. You actually have... <laughs> you are living a scenario that a guy that's never gotten pussy dreams up so that he can be misogynistic. <laughs> what if I meet a hot girl and she sucks my dick and then I co-sign her? She takes advantage of me emotionally. I co-sign on a fucking apartment and then she leaves me and I'm financially ruined and I also give chlamydia to the next two girls that I had sex with who I liked. What if that happens? And everyone's like, shut the fuck up, you neckbeard motherfucker. <laughs> Except it happened to you. <laughs> you got your ass pwned. The point is, you're going to be fine. You, you've survived. 
clean that penis up, don't give it to any other women, and start over, knowing what to avoid and, you know, set some boundaries. It'll show strength to come back from this and be a cute guy that treats women correctly. You'll be an exa a shining example, and I believe in you, all right? I really don't know what you mean by nuclear, but don't whatever you meant, don't do it. But you're gonna be all right, buddy. Um, hit me with the next one, Ralph. All right, this is another follow-up call. It's from the fellow who came in his girlfriend's eye, and she said she had a uh, glaucoma. Yes, the wait, the one that was like being a bitch about it, and he thought he should break up with her. Yes. Yes, hit me with it. Hey, Stavi. It's James from. Uh, what was that? I came on my. Oh, the audio. Sorry, the audio in the beginning is a bit fucked, but okay. the rest of the call is good. Cool, cool, cool. Girlfriend's face, and she thought that she had glaucoma. Right. Um. Turns out that she might have over exaggerated. The doctor, the optometrist, whatever the fuck it was, told her that she might have glaucoma like at a later date that she's like showing signs of it at an early <laughs> stage or something like that. Um, I showed her your reaction to my call mm. and um, I, I guess in a, like a fucked up kind of way, it sort of shamed her into letting me come on her face again. <laughs> no. I did that. Uh, it didn't get into her eyes. <laughs> she actually liked it this time, or at least she lied and told me that she did. Don't and, implicate me in this. <laughs> um, she's totally down to do that. And she said that maybe next time I can come in her mouth. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Thank you, Stavi. I'm going to go get my dick sucked. No. Woo! Love no. you, baby. How did this happen? <laughs> Don't fucking implicate me into shaming your girlfriend into fucking sucking you off, man. I preach open communication. I didn't say use me as a proxy. Sit her down and be like, babe, this is important to me. I really want to fucking blast one all over your fucking lips and mouth. I'm going to say some things for comedic effect on this show. I don't want this poor woman. <laughs> I, the way he celebrated. <laughs> this makes me feel unclean. <laughs> God damn it. Let me say this. <laughs> For the future. If you call, like, look. If you call in and I tell you to talk to the person you asked me about, do it. Don't fucking use me as your fucking cowardly, cowardly proxy. All right? That, this is teach a man to fish. Give Get a man some head. He'll, ha he'll get head one time. Teach a man to get, get head. He'll get head forever, okay? You, my friend, chose to get... You chose to get... Have a man get you head. I'm that man. I got you head in this regard. You don't... But you don't... You haven't learned how to get head the way you like it, have you? No, you haven't. All right? And show her this one, too. If you don't want to suck... If you don't want to take this fucking load in your face, don't do it, sweetie, okay? Having said that... It seems like it's important to him. And I don't want to put the onus on you, but if this relationship matters to you, maybe you have to f work on communication. But believe me, I'm not telling you to fucking catch one across the fucking chin if that's not what you're into. All right, let's keep it fucking moving. Hey there, Stavi. This is Liam uh, calling you from Illinois. Um, calling today because... I just, I don't get it, man. I, you definitely get more pussy than I do. Okay. But I am arguably less fat, taller, have mm -hmm. a full head of hair, full yeah. mouth of teeth, and probably the same penis. That's a uh, problem. Do I need to get into comedy? Do I need to be, like, have some small level of fame to get on your level, man? Hey, whoa, come on. 
I just don't get why you're getting more pussy than me, man. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Stoppy. Hysterical question. Um, <clears throat> I love that. Um, well, look, I'm not going to fucking bullshit you here. Absolutely, it's helped to get some little modicum of fame. It's definitely been easier to fuck. But I will say this. I was fucking more than I should have given my, you know, given my statistics long before the podcast. Um, the, pro <laughs> the problem is, man, it's the fact that you made this call is the reason. It's all about confidence and belief in yourself. Okay, um, I hope you're not one of the guys downvoting the YouTube, my YouTube videos. All right, I bet you it's a lot of guys that are having. At least you're having your, you're talking to me about these thoughts instead of passive aggressively, trying to sabotage my YouTube channel. Um, you don't need fame. You don't need whatever. I I have goofy ass friends that are ugly and fuck. You just have to be a fun guy. You have to have a fucking personality. You have to be a good time. All right, sounds like you're probably struggling with some things. Um, you know what I mean? Um, hold on, let me say something. You're retarded. Let's get him out of there. He's clearly one of the one of the guys in the chat, Ralph. Maybe your channel just sucks. Thank you for exposing yourself, you stupid motherfucker. Um, yeah, it's the it's the Reddit nugget. Um. <clears throat> Have, okay, back to your question there. Lee, what was his name? Liam? Um, I hear it in your voice. The pussy thirst has gotten bad. You've turned on a fatter, uglier man getting more pussy than you. The thing you need to realize is we're all a community. I want you to fuck. Okay? Guys that fuck are happier. Um, you just gotta be a good time, bro. You sound a little depressed. It, it takes a while to dig out of the hole. You gotta fucking love... You gotta love Liam. Alright? You can't be thinking of it... Well, I'm not as fucked up as the other guy. You gotta think, well, what's good about me? Right? Because, yeah, you described all those other things, but I'm a great... You didn't you didn't say, I'm funny. And not just professionally, but, like, I'm, a, I'm interesting to talk to. I take an interest in... I'm a good listener. Right? Qu uh, I'm quick. I'm a good conversationalist. I'm a great, I love a nice spread. I'll invite you over some good food. My cooking has gotten me pussy before. Okay? I like a nice movie. I'll talk to you about what you're into. I'm interested in other people. Right? You're going to have a nice time if you hang out with me. What do these people have? What can they say about you? Right? What kind of time is a girl going to have if she hangs out with you? And that's what you have to be thinking about. Not... Well, it's my, I'm not as shitty as someone else, but okay, but what are you better at than other people? Or what are, you, what are you good at? What are your strengths? You're looking at it through a prism of negativity, my friend, and you got to look at it through positivity. Through positivity will you get pussy. <clears throat> what are we saying here in the chat? Yeah, spicy girl, listen to women when they talk, have confidence, passions, hobbies, and be funny. And look, maybe you can't be that funny, but you can be pretty funny. You can be uh, entertaining. But even without that, even if you just go with listen, confidence, have some passions, that's really it. Just be nice, bro. <clears throat> and don't have an ode. In my younger years, I had a, I deserve to fuck. What the hell? You know what I mean? Like, you get bitter. You're a little bitter. That's clear. You got to lose that. You got to lose the bitterness. All right? Nobody wants to taste something that's bitter. Your fucking prick of dill probably tastes like lemon peels. All right? You want to be fucking happy. You want to be sweet. You want that fucking dick tasting like honey. Think of it that way. <clears throat> But, um, I, you know what? I'm, I want you to fuck so much. I'm going to, I, you see how I completely excused how much of a hater you were with this call and you were, you got to get that hate out of your heart. All right. <laughs>
and I won't even go in on your ass, even though now that I've given you some advice, I've got some insults locked and loaded. They're in my heart. But I'm going to let it slide because you're, you've, a man, so, terrible things happen to a man's brain when he gets no pussy for a prolonged period of time. <clears throat> but I respect you and you can do, you can do well, my friend. Give me, uh, give me the next one there, Ralph. Hi, Stavros. Um, I just wanted to say I really like your attitude. I like the grill and chill mindset, lifestyle. And I wanted to know if you could um, give me some advice on how to adopt that into my life and how to just be more easygoing and uh, not overthink things too much. Thanks. Sure. Um, well, it's difficult. Look, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I have a problem overthinking. Um, I'm glad that you see that. You see the grill and chill situation. You're getting that vibe from me. And look, I am. Like I said, like I was telling our friend Liam, I'm a good time. I'm a nice hang. Um, but I fucking, I fucking live with a lot of anxiety. It's hard for me to get out of my head. And I think what helps for me um, is to have dedicated times when you sort of try and harness being in your head, right? Have the kind of schedule where you're like, all right, I'm going to fucking overthink this shit. I'm going to try. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to, these are my times to do this shit. Like, I don't know what it is for you. Obviously we all, you probably have to work way more than I do. Right. But at least my schedule breaks down to like days that I have, you know, Fridays, for example, I know I've stopped yourselves your problems. Right. Um, so I've been recording a basketball podcast in the morning on Fridays and then I have Stop Me Soldier Problems. So that's a day where I'm like, it's not, we're not grilling and chilling. That's a day where I get up, I go on a little walk, I have some fucking breakfast, uh, some fucking smoothies, all this shit. And, you know, I have a very fucking Spartan, just like chicken and rice before the show and I'm ready to fucking do the show, right? Um, but then Saturdays, I don't have shit to do. Saturdays, Saturdays are my day to fucking watch three fucking movies, get fucking high, grill, do it all. Sundays, we got Come Town again. Um, so I do some fucking... That's... As stupid as that show is, it does take, you know... That's like a chunk of your day. And I try and do some other work on Sundays, too. Uh, Mondays, again, is basketball and the art stream. So that's a busy day. But then Tuesdays, I don't have shit to do. Wednesdays, Come Town. That's about a half day. But Tuesdays and Saturdays are my days where I have nothing to do. And that's where we're grilling and chilling. And that's where I... If, if if the way your brain works is you fucking worry constantly about something, then for me, it's helped to have all or nothing days. So I have days where I have to do three podcasts and, you know, write something, do an audition, whatever. That's an all day type of thing. I'm working, you know, still not hard compared to real people, but for me, I'm working all day. Then you have the days where I, I don't even want to fucking answer an email. If somebody texts me and I don't feel like it, I'm not texting them back. So that's what helps me. That's what helps me to fucking manage. Um, but, but again, every person is different and I need to know a little bit more about the kinds of stuff that you worry about. Um, Tuesday and Saturday, those are the beautiful days. Although now with the basketball season, our, the schedules are always kind of, we have to, uh, I have to fucking switch it around depending on what's big and what's happening. It's a good life, Madrugada420. I'm sorry you're dying in Bosnia. <clears throat> um <laughs> shouts out to our dying our dying Bosnian friend. Um so that's it. Call back if you if you want to get more specific about the sorts of things that bother you, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think as somebody with anxiety, that's what's helped me in the past. Um let's get another one going there. Let's get another one going there, big Ralphio. Stabby baby, this is Mike. I'm 21, uh, first time caller, long time fan. Anyway, let's get to it. So about uh, it's been about four and a half years. I've been seeing this girl. Uh, really love her. She really loves me. It's all been good, except for these past few months. Uh, shit's been kind of spiraling. She's had a history with uh, you know anxiety and depression, but it's just gotten debilitating to the point where it's kind of affecting my mental health and. Um, our relationship, it just isn't as good as it used to be. So I'm thinking about, you know, 
getting out of there, getting out of the relationship, whatever. Um, but here's the complicated part. Um, I did bump her <laughs> about a year ago and we got back together. Okay. Um, and so I got to do it again. So I'm just asking you, how should I lay it down gently? Thank you, baby. Love mm, you. Fuck. This is tough, brother. Um, Well, I think, uh, first of all, this is advice that I also give. There's a lot of people that call in with similar things. Um, the key thing here is that you're 21. And I believe at the beginning of the call, you said you were, you'd been together for four years. I'm sorry. I was thinking about the Joker more. I was thinking about the Joker being like, she held me down and she fucked my ass. <laughs> so I was zoned out. I was literally thinking about Joker and the Batman and Alfred at Buffalo Wild Wings. And the Joker bringing up how he got raped again. And everyone's like, okay. I thought, did you go to therapy? Did you go to the therapist that I told you about? Because I'm just kind of, I have some money on this game and I'm kind of, I kind of want to see what happens. <laughs> All right. So let me just kind of take a moment because this is a serious call and I, I got it. You deserve me to be fucking in the zone. Um, maybe we get some curly fries, Master Wayne. <laughs> Wouldn't that make everyone feel better? Maybe root beer floats. Um, um, okay, so clearly this is not working out. COVID's tough. Are you guys together or are you just... You're, are you quarantined at the same place or no? A, a breakup is difficult every fucking time. That's... It doesn't get easy. Um, what happened the first time? Why did you break up the first time? And what issues are driving you to break up? Is it just that you can't handle that she is getting depressed and anxious and all this stuff? Is that really it? That's a little fucked, but at the same time, you know, if you know, if you know, you know, I say, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say you're such a fucking drag. I don't want to be around you, right? So this guy's in the chat. Motherfuckers in the chat? Or no? I don't think so. I'm checking. Okay. It sounded like somebody said he was. Anyway, whatever. Um, anyway. Um, I mean, I think you gotta... What were the reasons you broke up the first time? And if those weren't resolved, you could probably bring that up, right? Is there something going on with you that makes you feel like you need to get out of this relationship? Or is it just the fact that are you are you recognizing that you can't deal with that you don't feel as compatible? Is all this time together making you realize that this is gonna work out? The other reality is you guys are fucking young and you're probably not gonna be in this relationship forever, right? Alright, I got his messages pulled up. He is in chat. Oh he is. Okay. Uh, he hasn't said anything. He's just saying, I'm the one who called in. So <laughs> You dumb bitch. Um, okay, so I think what you got to do is, uh, yeah, tell her you're gay. Tell her you're the Joker. Tell her you're the Joker and you got raped. <laughs> Here's how you break up with it. You start wearing Joker makeup a little bit every day. You start with some foundation. Eventually, it's all white. Then you dye your hair green. And um, you start wearing purple suits, and she's going to want to break up with you. Um, simple. Um, but if you're in lockdown, are, are, are you guys quarantined together? Either way, um, what are the answers? Is it just a depression thing? He's not really saying shit, is he? In the fucking chat. Um... But if it's just a depression thing, then that's a little shitty on you. It's almost like a, if somebody's going through a different problem, like if somebody was sick with a different illness and you broke up with him, you're a little bit of a dick. There's that Seinfeld episode 
um, where Elaine is dating that guy or whatever. Um, but in reality, you just have to fucking if if those issues that you broke up the first time weren't resolved, you just be like, look, all this time it's made me really think, and I just don't think we're right together. And that's really it. I mean, people have had a lot more time to think, man. Your relationship is not the first one that's been the ca a casualty of fucking Corona. Um, a lot of people that were in things that probably weren't going to work out re recognize that. Um, she lashes her shit out on you for no reason. Yeah. Well, I mean, have, have you tried having a conversation about it first and foremost? If you have, and she still isn't taking that into consideration, then that's totally valid to say. You could be like, look, I just feel like we're, we're not in the place to be in a relationship right now. And the reality is... We've tried this before, it, we've had some other issues, and we're both pretty young, and, and we probably, it's just, it's time to move on. And that's, po that's totally, you know, that's a very acceptable thing to say, buddy. But at the, at the other, at the same time, have you tried having these conversations? Like, hey, look, I don't appreciate the way you lash out at me. You know, I want you to take some steps to try and deal with this stuff and I can help. But maybe, look, the reality is that might be what she needs, but maybe you're not that you're not willing to do that. And you know what? That's kind of fair. You Maybe you're, you're 21. It's a fucking college relationship. You probably didn't sign up for all this shit, right? Maybe you're ready to move on and that's fair. But um, I think that's the way you have to frame it. Don't make her feel that bad about it. You know, don't just be like, We've had these communication issues, whatever, whatever, and I, and ju I just feel like I've had time to think about the relationship, and I really care about you, and I really love you, but I just don't think it's going to work out. That's, I mean, it's simple, but that is the reality. But yeah, don't play this like the guy who uh, forced, but it, you also have to think, what do you want? Do you want the relationship to work out? Are there some steps you can take to make it work out? But if you don't even want that, then you're kind of just stringing her along. So if you've made up your mind that you are breaking up with her, you know, say that you've you've just thought about it and it's nothing that she's done wrong. It's just you're not in the place to be, you, you can't really be as supportive as she needs right now. And you also feel like as much as you care about her, it's you've given it a, a really good shot. You've tried, but it's just, it's time to move on. <clears throat> you got it, buddy. Apex twin head. Good luck. Yeah, the sooner the better is true. Um, give me, give me the next one there, Ralph. All right, this is our last repeat caller for the week. Uh, last week, he called in and said that he went on a date with a trans girl and then ditched yes! when he found out she had a penis. Yes. So this follow up to that. Hey, Stavi. Hey, man. Thanks again for answering my question. Uh, I just want to say, you know what? You're right, man. You're, you're so right. And I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to her today and, um, you know what, honestly, um, I thought different in the sense of like, um, cause I've met a girl before who's had like two holes, you know, and I don't know, like I'm, I'm, I'm open. I just was not expecting penis. That, that, you sure. know what I mean? And, uh, I didn't mean to come off as a, no transphobic or anything, because I'm not very educated on that kind of stuff. But, uh, no, it's all good. No, man. Um, yeah, I'm going to meet up with her today, and uh, we'll just talk it out. I mean, I liked her enough to, you know, go on a first date, so I kind of do a second one. So, yeah, man. Thank you so much for just helping me out, and uh, I'll tell you how that goes. Bye, Respect. Sally. Respect. Please tell me how it goes, but also, what do you mean too old? Do you mean a girl with a pussy, or do you mean a girl with two pussies and an ass? Did you just... It sounds like this man was... It'd be funny if an alien has been studying humanity and they were going to come down to, like, you know, ingratiate themselves and study the human race, but they their textbooks were old and they hadn't gotten to trans people yet. So he was just thrown for... He was like, oh, my God, I, I must have misread the manual on who has a penis and who doesn't. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know what you mean by two holes. So maybe you're just... That was a weird way to say... Uh, women, born biological women, but either way, talk it out, baby. All right, dip your little toes in. 
you didn't come off as whatever. You were shocked. I get that. You weren't expecting it. Uh, it's And maybe even if you were, when a fucking prick comes out of those panties, may it call you off guard. That's fine. But good on you. That's the right attitude. And please update us on how it goes. I hope you... I hope you were getting your fucking little uvula fucked by, by, her, by her dick. <laughs> I hope you were gagging on that shit like Cardi, dude. Respect. Hit us back. <clears throat> Hit us with the next one, baby. Hey, Stavi. Uh, this is Jordan from Minneapolis. Love you, bro. Love the show. Um, so here's my problem. I got a beautiful girlfriend. I love her a lot. I want to marry her. Uh, the only issue is she's Asian, and I noticed that you and Nick made fun of Adam a lot for having an Asian girlfriend. <laughs> Asian girlfriends early in the show, so uh, just wondering if it's okay or if, or if oh my god, uh, dude, that's not gonna work out. Let me know what you think. But come on, man, you motherfuckers need to ch- you need to fucking stop worshiping podcasts. We weren't making fun of him for having an Asian girlfriend. We were making fun of him for getting cucked by an Asian girlfriend, okay? Big difference. <clears throat> big, big difference. Um, you can have an Asian girlfriend. <laughs> we don't actually know you. I know you're hoping that maybe you'll step into a time portal and you'll you'll wake up in uh, in Adam's body and you're like, I'll turn it around. <laughs> Damn, I just thought of a great idea for Come Town. V- 3D and you get to be Adam. Because let's be honest, you guys, you don't have the autistic mind to be Nick, you don't have the joie de vivre to be me, but you could be Adam. Let's you could you guys could be Adam. It wouldn't work if you were the other two. Let's be honest. You it wouldn't work if you were me or Nick. You don't laugh as generously as me. You don't know how to keep the the bits the bit train rolling. Just grease the wheels. And what? You're going to fucking you have the autistic knowledge and brain malfunction that makes Nick the way he is, you don't. I'm Nick would just be push up QTEs. I'm closest to you out of the three. Yes, you can be me if you suck my dick first. Anyway, look, the point is, or maybe maybe you're just a guest. I don't fucking know. We got a VR. We're going to do a VR thing and make a lot of money here. Sell it on fucking PlayStation. First, first person podcasting. I bet that would make a hilarious amount of money. No joke. If we just record ourselves fucking podcasting. <laughs> and you could just sit there, hold a the mic. And you could talk, and and whatever you said, it was just trained for us to be like, <laughs> that's so true, dude. <laughs> God damn, I'm laughing at how much that would sell. <sighs> fuck, but we're we we'll never it will never happen. But I mean, unless someone just offers to do it and gives us like a hundred thousand dollars. Um, go ahead, pal. Date whoever you like, regardless of their ethnicity. Next question, Ralph. It's not the of the show, um, but I need you to tell me whether I'm an asshole or not. Okay. So I uh, went to a... I grew up in a small uh, little town in Connecticut, very homogenous, very white. And then I went to a small liberal arts school, like 2,000 kids. And it's, it was much more diverse. So over the past few years, I've kind of been experimenting sexually. And I found out um, that I prefer Asian women. I think they're beautiful and I'm attracted to them. So okay. I've, I've been doing my whole phase. I slept with about 20 women, and I'd say about 10 are Asian. And okay. now I have the reputation on campus of the guy that likes Asians and, like, 
you know, girls get pissed about it. I've, I've been slapped before for hitting on an Asian girl just because I, I'm a fetishist. But I'm not trying to be a dick or anything. It's just my preference, and it's just kind of like happened this way through the numbers. It's not intentional. It's just kind of worked out this way. So am I a huge asshole for being attracted to Asian women? Um, thanks, Bobby. Uh, I won't say you're a huge asshole for that, but you are, you're an asshole for apparently keeping a spreadsheet by ethnicity. <laughs> Knowing your percentages. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I think, you know, this happens a little bit if you fuck a lot. Way to, way to sneak that in there. You didn't have to tell us it was 20, but congrats to you. It's a nice little run you ripped off there. Um, <clears throat> You're in an interesting position. It's not your fault. And you like what you like. And do, do you fetishize these people? Or do you just... You just sort of... You're attracted to them. I mean, I don't know, man. I haven't thought about this because I don't really have a type. I've never been, I mean, I think I'm learning I do have a type, the, long, the older I am in my, in my, in my wisdom, but it's not like I ever, you know, have been like, I gotta fuck this exact kind of woman. If, I think if you're not approaching that, if you're not approaching it in that way, if you're not just like, I have to fuck, you know, if you will fuck anyone, but the, the women that happen to catch your eye happen to be Asian for whatever reason, and if you're not... If you're not, if as look, are you, let me ask you this: Are you teaching yourself Japanese? Do you have your own chopsticks at college? Did you come to college with jade chopsticks? And do you wear a fucking kimono in your dorm? Because if you do any of that stuff, then yes, all right, something's fucked up here, whether you know it or not. Uh, but if you're just going about trying to get sucked off. And the heart and the cock want what the heart and the cock want. You did nothing wrong. But uh, you're going to have to look inward and know that. Okay? You're going to have to figure that out for yourself. And don't and do not keep track of the ethnicities you fuck. Okay? That's weird. Don't have a fucking... Don't know the standard deviation of... I don't know what that. I tried to finish the joke, but I I so don't understand what a standard deviation is that I couldn't even come up with the punchline to that setup. So go about the world purely without any weird racist malice in your heart and you'll be fine, brother. All right? You might need, you know what you might you might need to fucking or the other, the other, the other end of the spectrum is you might just need to start cycle. And if that doesn't work, just cycle through races. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to start fucking. You're gonna. It, it, and if you do, if you are the asshole, you're gonna have to go one and one. <laughs> one for you, one for them. <laughs> you're gonna have to start fucking everyone. Ugly, whatever. Why some? Some ugly white girls. You have to you have to mix it up. You have to be so weird for a while that it throws off your whole sexual profile. So my advice is, on one hand, stop with the spreadsheets. Stop worrying about what other people think. Just be yourself. Try and not take any biases into it. And on the other hand, if that doesn't work for you, lean into it heavier. Make create a fucking uh, create a fucking formula, and you're only allowed to fuck an Asian woman after. You fucked 1.2 other or something like that. Okay? You have to throw people off the scent. Start sucking off guys. Start fucking only, you know, uh, men for South American men for a while. And that'll get you a fucking free pass. You start getting fucked in the ass by guys for like one semester. And then you become the bi guy. And no one cares. No one cares what your preference is then. Because now you're a cool queer guy. If you really want to fuck, and look, it might hurt to get fucked in the ass by some big, beautiful, delicious golden brown cocks. That might hurt you, but just think about all the fucking, 
Think about all the bimbop you're gonna have for breakfast after you get sucked off by a Korean girl. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. So that's that's two. I, now, again, I would suggest the first option. If I were you, I would do the first one. But that might not be who you are. So I have to give, I have to give a, a, a number of different solutions to various problems. <clears throat> you can't be an Asian guy. If some people in the chat are like, fuck an Asian guy, no. That, then... Then it looks like it transcends your sexuality. Then it looks like you'll fuck anything as long as they come from that continent. So you can't do that. <clears throat> Next question there, uh, there, Ralphio. Hey, it's Davi, baby. Uh, awesome show. Um, I have a question for you, actually. Uh, second time I'm calling, but... Not like it was uh, answered before. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> so initially I was going to ask, like, how to get my boyfriend to come inside my pussy more. Nice. He seems to really enjoy coming on my face, which is fine, right? But, like, I, I like it when he busts inside. Like, it feels really fucking good. And I'm Respect. like, oh, how, how do I get him to do this more? Um, but then uh, he ended up dumping me. So oh, now my question is. Uh, I still want to get off. Like, I'm still a pretty horny person, but uh, it's really hard to get in the headspace to have an enjoyable masturbation session because I'm super kind of like bummed out and heartbroken yeah. and missing this person. Um, so, what's your advice? Uh, thank you. Bye. Ah, oh, geez. That's tough. Sorry to hear that. Wow. What a. We, we did a real fucking. 180 with that one. It started out as an awesome question about busting, getting busted inside of a pussy, which is cool. And one of my favorite, I would say, top top two places to bust. Historically, number one. But I would say top two, depending on the day between mouth and pussy. So we started out there, and then it became this, this tale of fucking heartbreak and pussy ache as well. Um... Some people in the chat are saying to DM me. That's a possibility. Uh, but at the same time, if you're too bummed out to beat off, I fully understand that. You know, you got your heart broken. There might it might be a second where uh, you don't want to. You just don't want to fucking crank one out. If you really want to dance with the devil, you could jack off to this person, and it'll feel good. You know, I think so, sometimes that works, but then you, then that post nut clarity, it's even, it's even more, you know, it's even more shocking because now you're sad and your pussy's completely, you know, juiced. Um, sometimes you just got to listen to your body. Just don't beat off. Wait till you're, wait till you're horny. But at the same time, I also feel like, uh, you know, women have wild ass vibrators that can kind of do a lot of the work for them. But I also, at the same time, it is headspace oriented. You might, you might try and watch some pornography. You might try and ratchet it up and watch really fucked up shit. These are short term solutions, though. You know, it, it's almost like when you're really in pain, you just up the dosage of a drug. You know, you can't be doing that constantly. So your options are short term. Maybe watch some fucked up pornography, some real, some real shit that's like get you out of the headspace, or some real like you know, or go to the spank bank. Think about past really hot things that have happened to you. But having said all of that, it's just gonna take time. I, I wish I had a better answer for you. It's just gonna take time. Even if you were like have a rebound and have a little fling with somebody and fuck, you know, I've done that where I've had a relationship and then I fucked and I and I was like, oh, this is fun, and then like. You're just pushing off those feelings of feeling bummed, you know? They're inevitable. And they're go and you know what? I'm sorry, I hate to say it, they're gonna make your fucking your spiritual dick soft. You might just have to stay there unjacked off for a while. <clears throat> and that's sad. That's sad to think about your pussy not getting jacked. But we all don't, we all go unjacked sometimes. And uh, until your heart can get hard, 
your pussy your pussy won't get hard either so your pussy your your heart <laughs> pussy is soft <laughs> And it's just going to take some time. And I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, and listen, you'll catch yourself horny. It'll happen. It'll happen in random increments. Ride that wave. But it's going to be it's going to be less than usual for now. And that's okay. Feel your feelings. Sit through them. Don't ignore them. And you'll be all right, baby girl. Sorry to hear that. And if you need further help with this issue, perhaps... Perhaps there's somebody you could DM about. You can DM me about it. Just if I didn't cover this, if you have some follow ups, feel free to DM. <clears throat> Hit me with the next one there, Ralph. Hey, man. Uh, I got a bit of a clerk's situation here. Uh, I've seen this girl been about a couple of months. And uh, when we started seeing each other, uh, we got to talking about like prior stuff. Um, she told me that she was like technically a virgin, but, um, did stuff with guys when she was in high school and, uh, after high school, uh, we're both like in our early twenties and, uh, like she, she had been with a bunch of dudes, but never actually fucked any of them. Uh -huh. But the way that I am with, uh, relationships, uh, I don't really like to go into them unless I think that they can last long term and with the number of guys that she's been with in the past not all the way but you know still fooling around i don't know if this is like uh you know a long-term material right here i can't really be sure That's so fun. i don't know if i should just cut and run now and play it safe because i don't want to like you know get cheated on or any of that shit oh I, my god what sort the of fuck is going, going on, on here but uh I don't know if I should just write it out instead. You know, it's kind of a weird situation for me. Thanks. This is your dick. This is the size of your dick, pal. Okay? Now, look, you're calling in and you're asking for advice. So, I'm not... I don't want to disparage you too much, but your dick is on turbo small right now with this kind of question. And you're young. He's in his early 20s. But this is childish-ass thinking. Number one... Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck how many people the person you've been with is fucked? Now, maybe that's going to take you a while to fucking get over whatever. Some fu This is some patriarchy type shit. But number one, brother, if she's not giving up the pussy, you know she's sucking dick good. That's a number one. And not only are you not going to be harmed by this, but she's sort of, to protect her pussy, you know, she has gained incredible dick sucking skills you would imagine um this is a fucked up way of thinking though bro t t first of all to give a fuck how much how much cock she sucked it just means you're competing sexually with the with this girl and let me tell you something if she's hot and and you're just a regular fucking doofus you're gonna lose that competition every day of the fucking week all right so let that go you've lost you've lost the battle to fuck more uh, but second of all, to equate that with cheating is crazy to me. It's not... If somebody's fucked a lot, it doesn't mean they're going to cheat on you. Has she given you any indication that she's cheated on? It's one thing if she's like, I've I've cheated on everybody I've ever been with. Like, so you're telling me you would rather have a girl that's fucked three guys but cheated on all of them than some girl that's out there having fun, sucking off, going to a party, going to girls' night, giving head in the fucking... Who's just a fun time, sucking off a cabana boy... On vacation, but has been faithful in every relationship. You'd rather be with the one that's only fucked three times and cheated. First of all, this fictional three three dick girl, she doesn't fuck as good, okay? And that's major. You think that's not major? That's huge. And second of all, she had, this has nothing to do with uh. You, you've got some weird fucking shit wrapped up in, you know, little. This is a little. This is a little slut shamey, if you ask me. Um, and that's fucked up. And you gotta let go of that. And also, <laughs> your dick is on turbo small for another reason, and that's you're in your early 20s, and you're talking about you don't want to go into anything unless you think it's serious. Let me fucking break it to you again. You're not gonna marry this girl. <laughs> Even, like... 
yeah you need to here's the thing i'm almost saying break up with her because so she is not fucked a bunch of guys clearly she has some weird religious fucking hang-ups if she sucked off a bunch of guys and didn't give up the cheeks and you clearly have you might be from a similar background i don't know but you're 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 gonna feed into each other's hang-ups she clearly has some kind of hang-up with regards to just fucking because she you know whatever She's treating the pussy sacred while she's out there. Ha, ha. Um, you might you might not be a good match, but for you, for your development, you gotta let go of that shit. You gotta let go of. Um, you gotta let go of judging a woman because she fucked a bunch of guys. Especially because I, what is what's the number? I bet it's not even that fucking high. In summation, you shouldn't care if a girl's fucked a bunch of guys. It doesn't, if she has fucked a bunch of guys, that doesn't necessarily mean, not only does it not necessarily mean it has no correlation to her being faithful or not, and third of all, the more she's fucked, the better she is at fucking. It's actually a positive. Once you fucking let go of the patriarchy, my man, she knows her way around the penis and some balls. You sound like you want to have fucking dry ass, missionary ass no ass eating type sex for the rest of your life you want to have two position sex with the girl that's that won't suck dick could never be me and it should never be you <clears throat> let your hair down stop worrying about this shit try and have a nice relationship with this girl and you're in your early 20s for fuck's sake don't worry about it being serious be in the moment have a fun time don't think about the future too much the odds of you marrying anybody this young are low, so don't even let it... It can happen, but it's not, you know, I wouldn't bank on it. <clears throat> so, go get some head and stop being so judgmental. That's my advice. But... And call back if you want to be upgraded. Because right now you're on turbo small. Your dick is on turbo small. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, let's get the let's get the next question going there, Ralph. The fuck? Why isn't this shit? Hey. Go 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 ahead, Poppy. Hey, Stavi. Um, I fuck man. I don't even know where to start. So I've been dating this girl for almost two years now, and I love her a lot, man. She's really great. Things are great. Um, the pussy is fire. Um, nice. However, that pussy just like doesn't come around very often, my friend. Uh, I like we haven't had sex in like two weeks. Okay. Um, it's been due to some other stuff and everything, but basically, my girlfriend has a really, really low sex drive due to her birth control and mm. she really doesn't want to like switch her birth control. It's just something that she's okay with. How do I approach the subject with my girl? How do I basically tell her like, Hey, you don't want to fuck enough. <laughs> I mean, we don't even, I mean, it's maybe like two, three times a month sometimes, man. And you know, I don't know. I just feel shitty because at the end of the day, basically all I'm saying is, is like, my dick isn't getting wet enough. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's like, what a fucking piece of shit I am, you know? So I don't know. Am I in the wrong here? Do I even bring this up to my girlfriend? How do I bring this up to my girlfriend? Um, hoping my poppy would help me out. Yes, of course. All right, buddy. Love you so much. Bye bye. Okay. Well, look, you're not in the wrong. You love this girl. You have a good relationship. Um, you're not saying you got to get off your fucking birth control, bitch. You're not like, you're not like giving her an ultimatum. You're not, you're not being it. Look, it's okay to need different things. It could, the flip side could have been, you, you could be in a relationship where the girl wants to fuck too much. Um, this happens a lot. Some people don't line up sexually. Some people want to have, want to fuck, you know, every other day. Some people want to fuck once a week. Some people want to fuck once a month. That shit happens. Um, I think so often when questions on this show boil down to communication, you absolutely should talk to her about it. Um, and I think you could you could approach it from a perspective of 
Uh, is there anything I can do to help? You know, is there something? Because you said, because, okay, the beginning of this phone call, you were like, it's been like two weeks because of some other stuff. What's that other stuff? So she has the, you know, she's on some medication that lowers her sex drive. And that happens to a lot of people. It happens with not just birth control. It happens with, you know, fucking uh, uh, depression meds, which is fucking half the people, probably everybody that listens to the show is on. <laughs> but we've all been with somebody who has a lowered sex drive for because of, you know, medication or something. But is it is it medication plus something else? Are there are there other factors? Is she very stressed? Um, is she dealing with a lot of shit? I mean, it's a pandemic. A lot of, you know, I'm fucking stressed. I, I have days where I'm fucking depressed as hell. It, what is she dealing with? What are the factors other than, you know, the medication that are lowering her sex drive, right? Uh, and then could you help with those? Is there some kind of, you know, is, is she just stressed out? Is she overworked? Is, you know, is the house a mess? I mean, just... You never know what could set somebody off. And I think talking to her, checking in with her, seeing what her issues are, uh, just in general, is she happy in general? Is this a short-term thing? Is this been, how long has this been a problem? Has this been since the beginning when you started dating? My guess is no. So when did it start and what are the factors, right? You have to think about that. Um, and I think if you approach her from a position of like, is everything okay? Like, I... In an ideal world, I would like to have sex X amount of times. What's your ideal, right? Like, ask her, what's her ideal? If her ideal is every, you know, once a fucking month, and your ideal is, you know, every day, maybe that's an issue. But my guess is her ideal situation is probably more than what she's doing, but she's stressed because of a lot of different reasons. So I think you just got to check in with her, see what's going on, see has anything changed, can you help out? But it, it's really all about communication. And the fact that you're wondering about this, it's clear to me that you need to talk to her about it. Um, but yeah, be a cute guy about it. Obviously, don't make her feel like there's some fucking pressure on her. And also, I mean, a lot of women have dealt with that where it's like, you know, in past relationships, they felt they feel like, you know, they feel used or whatever. Um, and I think you just have to approach the conversation in a gentle loving manner but if, you, if you're in a great relationship for two years this should be the kind of conversation that you could handle no problem so don't be nerd you know don't be nervous just tell her how you feel and uh you know i when to do it is kind of tough i don't know it's ne these conversations are never that easy um but but also maybe if you think about what, what i just told you are there other factors? Maybe you could just have a general check-in with her, see how she's doing, and then weave it into what's going on. I mean, in a good relationship, there should be a lot of regular communication. So get in there, champ. Definitely talk to her about it and uh, be cute and sweet about it. Ah, oh, fuck. But... It's nice that you love her, and I hope I hope you guys get the fuck big time. I'm rooting for you. <clears throat> Please update us. Give give me another one. Give me another one, there, Ralph. Hey, Stav. Uh, I'm a 22 year old virgin. Um, I started working out a year ago. I'm putting 35 pounds of muscle, muscle, but like I still am having trouble acquiring the pussy. Um, <laughs> but this question's not really about that. I consider myself physically attractive, but how do I use this physical attractiveness to procure, procure nudes from hot women? Um, mm. Like, when's the best time to ask for them? Is it like after the hello um, or sometime in between? If you could just <laughs> shed some light on that that subject for us uh, oh, out there. My beautiful be boy. Thanks a lot. Bye. My beautiful no pussy getting boy talking about acquisitions. Trying to add nudes to your fucking... To your fucking uh uh fucking item screen like it's Zelda's bows and arrows and shit. Over here I have the ocarina and next to it I have uh, a Puerto Rican girl's breasts and I have some boots that allow me to run through fire and next to that I have a Chinese girl's pussy. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, respect, brother. Respect. Look, you're you're horned up and you're hot, and you've got some muscle going. And unfortunately for you, it's a it's a pandemic, which is tough. Uh, but certainly. Certainly, you don't want to go right after. You said after the hello or sometime in between. Yes, it's gonna be after. It's gonna be after the hello, not right after. You don't go. Hey, what's up? What's what do your fucking tits look like, bitch? I could bench press a lot, by the way. Um, the reality is being hot uh, is one factor, right? And if you're if you're actually very hot, it wouldn't be that hard. You're probably medium hot. You're probably just an okay looking guy and you have some uh, social anxiety. <clears throat> the bad news is, well, it's not bad news. I think you just kind of have to stay straight. If you're hot enough, you could stay with like, you know, simple responses um, and just kind of be a little flirt and hint towards sexual stuff. Now the game theory the acquiring nudes theory is you could just be as out front as possible, as quickly as possible, and be like, I'm horny, can I see your breasts? It's not gonna work, but maybe one out of a hundred times it works. Um, I think you should try the, you know, it almost doesn't matter that you're hot in this scenario. You have to just think of that as a bonus, and you should just try and have a nice conversation. Hit it off, be funny. Um, and, I think the closest way to getting to see nudes is uh, complimenting a picture. If I mean, let's say you're talking on Instagram DMs. Maybe you hit a story and be like, damn, you look incredible or something like that. And then she says, thank you. And then you could say something like, I bet those titties look even better out of your bikini. <laughs> or the ass cheeks are out. You'd be like, damn, I'm trying to get a fucking bite. Let me get a taste. So... You know, I would say those are your options. You want to set up a good rapport, but also let it be known that you can be horny as well and that you are, in fact, horny and would like to use her body in a sexual manner. And if you are as hot as you say you are, those two things together should lead to seeing nudes. Yes, Ralph, that's a good point. What you want to do is go to her Instagram and like every single bikini picture she's ever posted going back to the time she was 16 and on spring break. And if you do that, she will drive, she'll find your address and without asking, she'll drive to your house and suck your cock. <clears throat> but the, very, the the true reality is, um, whether it's acquiring nudes or acquiring sex, you just have to be uh, a, a good guy, a nice guy, have a nice conversation. Particularly as a as a virgin, right? You don't have you don't have the skill set to just get to sex quickly yet. If you will ever have it, right? You're not familiar with that world, so just be a nice guy. Talk, find some interest, compliment her, be nice. And over time, you'll build up a rapport and, and you'll get to see some breasts. You know? Don't, you're trying to fucking, you're like, should I ask her for a tits after the hello? No. You're trying to, you're trying to fly before you can crawl. You need to crawl to some titties. You're crawling to titties. That's where you are right now. It's okay. Everyone starts somewhere. You're going to crawl to some titties. Then you're going to fucking walk slowly. Then you'll jog. Then you'll run. And then maybe one day you'll fly to some titties. But not yet, pal. So crawl by being a nice guy and by having a nice conversation. <clears throat> Next question there, Ralph. Hi, Stav. Um, So I have a problem, um, but it is not in the wheelhouse of fucking and fucking, which I know is your expertise. No problem. Um, so my dad is very, very supportive of me. He um, calls me every day, um, like gets me sandwiches. He lives nearby. I love him to death. But the other day I went over to my dad and stepmom's place for a barbecue. I roll up and there is a thin blue line flag no. hanging 
on the house no. as well as, as a sign that says we love and support our law enforcement officers. No. Um, the one, uh, my dad works IT at a jail. <laughs> Two, Damn. my stepmother um, is basically like red pilling him, I feel. No. She voted for Trump and every time I go over and meet with them, she always has to start, you know, going towards like conservative wacko politics and shit. Brutal. Like now she's sort of going against like mask stuff. Um, Ugh, and this is just really not like my dad. Um, but basically, how do I get my dad to stop being a fucking bootlicker? Because I love him and my little sister, who's just a fucking communist, yet like the closest to him, even she's like, she refuses to go over his house unless he takes that flight down. And honestly, I'm starting to feel the same. Um, thank you. Love you. Um, and I would like to be your second daughter, please. Bye. Yes, my second daughter. Sounds like you're going to need a new father. So, um, this is tough, right? Now, there is, a, there is an element of, at a certain point, somebody is family, right? And um, it's tough to completely cut out people that you love from your life. Especially if you've tried, like, have you had a conversation about it? Have you said, what bothers you about this? Has it be, do you think this is driving? Now, look, it's one thing for him to have these, like, political beliefs uh, and to not be an asshole about it and to not be trying to red pill people and to not have the flag up and all this shit and to be open to a discussion with you. And it's another thing to just be, you know, to not even be open to hearing your side of things. This is a tough one. I mean, I've been very lucky in my life. Me and my mom see pretty much eye to eye politically. Um, I don't have a lot of people close to me just in my family that all my family's in Greece. Everyone there is a fucking socialist. Um, this is a, this is a tough one. I mean, I think you have to try and have this conversation with your dad and just let him know have you how you feel talk talk him through you know talk this through with him and you just have to feel him out i mean i get it if you don't want to go over that house that, that house with that flag that's tough um but that almost to me is like this symbolic thing right of like Digging your heels in and force the thing is the reality is he might not change that much, right? Uh, and he's with this lady that sounds like a dumb bitch. She she might be the problem um, You have to think about like Is your dad turning into the kind of guy that? Can't be reasoned with at all won't listen to you when you you know tell him why this is really problematic to you Jesus, I mean that's so fucking it's hard because it's not a political issue. These cops are fucking murdering people. I mean, they just released body camera footage of... We talked about it a little bit earlier in the show, but like... And it, they just... They completely contradict every... Even things that are on camera. I mean, your dad works in a jail, right? Like, if it's his live, If it's tied up to his livelihood, it's like... That's fucked. I mean, has he been open to this conversation at all? Ah, fuck. Goddamn. You might have to have the equivalent of an intervention with your dad. You and your sister take him to lunch. Let him know this is... Because it's not... The reality is you're, go you're gonna... Politics with your family is, you know... It's not always gonna be... You're not gonna see eye to eye. Even voting for Trump. Which is brutal, right? If somebody is like... At least the first... I, I don't know about this time around, but, like, I could see how that could, like, harm how close you are to somebody. Unless they're, like, some, I don't know, 98-year-old dumb asshole. But having political disagreements, as long as that person is not, like, actively trying to harm the world, you're going to have to swallow a certain amount of that. But if he's out here fucking flying a thin blue line flag and your stepmom is leading marches against masks and shit like that 
I think you have to say like, look, this really bothers me, and it's just like it hurts. It hurts on a personal level. This is starting to hurt me, and it's starting to hurt. It's, it's starting to affect my ability to respect you. Um, I think you just have to have a conversation like that because it can't be about politics. It has to be about the fact that it's harming this relationship that you love with this person you really love, right? And look, there's a reality that he might... I don't know. And he sounds like a nice guy. You know, he's super supportive and he calls you and all this stuff. It's hard for me to jive, you know, those two things. But at least with somebody that that's not even willing to hear your part of the story. Is he willing to hear you out at all? Um, but I think that's what you have to do. You and your sister have to have a little convo with him solo. Take him out to lunch. He takes you out to lunch probably. Eat one of his sandwiches and just talk this out with him. Be like... Look, this is this kind this kind of stuff really hurts me. hurts my, it, it really hurts my feelings, and it's it's starting to affect the way I view I view our relationship. And it's this is classic stepmother shit too. Ah, fuck. You might have to kill the stepmom. <laughs> you might have to be like, hey, Barbara, if it's fake, why don't you walk through the fucking COVID ward? Why don't you kiss all these COVID patients on the lips? And then she does it. She gets it. She dies. Your father believes in science. And then he's like, and guess what? The police can suck my dick, too. But, I mean, look, if your dad's fundamentally not a bad guy and he's going down this kooky road, I think you have to, you have to be like, because it's tough. Some people's, you know, we had somebody who called in and his, 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 his uh, one of his best friends went down the road of white nationalism. And it's like, at a certain point, you do have to cut out your family members and, and those closest to you if, if what their beliefs are actively harming the world. And I think you have to, I, I think you should give your dad a chance and let him like talk, talk this out with you. But if it gets bad enough, you have to consider thinking about, yeah, not going over that house. And that's tough, especially because he sounds like a great guy. But I don't think you're there yet. I think you have a couple steps and you should, you should fight for this relationship with your father. Because like you said, this is not the guy he is. Maybe he skews more conservative than you. He sounds like he's more conservative than your little communist sister or whatever. Uh... But he, maybe this isn't fundamentally who he is, and he's just kind of going through the motions here, and he's got some dumb bitch <laughs> that's, that's pulling him that way. So, I don't know. You're going to have to have these conversations, and maybe you already have, and if that's the case, I don't know, call back and let me know, but you're going to have to give it a shot, and uh, hopefully your dad doesn't get too far gone. But, I mean, I think you could also try and get... Do you have any hot friends that have a daddy fetish? You could get him to cheat on this woman. And maybe your friends have better politics. And maybe... Maybe we get your dad flipped to BLM. Maybe he takes down the prison from the inside. He presses the button, all the jails... The cells go open, everyone's free. He abolishes that prison and he gets pussy from your young friend. That's another option.